Hi there, welcome to a short video focusing on year two microeconomics. And this video is in response to a question from one of the tutor to you users. And the question is how do firms achieve monopsony power? And it's a great question because uh, oftentimes students focus on the supply side of a market, for example, looking at monopoly or oligopoly, whereas there's increasing interest in and analysis of the effects of monopsony power on the demand side of markets. So let's spend a few minutes looking at this question, how do firms achieve monopsony power? There are lots of examples of, of businesses, organisations with monopsony power. So we'll mention in a few minutes the supermarkets, the NHS when they're purchasing drugs from pharmaceutical companies, the power generating companies buying their, their core raw materials, uh, Amazon, uh, there was a very famous article three or four years ago by economist Paul Krugman taking a pot shot at Amazon and arguing that their buying power is damaging to independent publishers and uh, businesses such as the major food manufacturers who of course are significant purchasers of of the raw ingredients for their manufactured processed foods so what is monopsony power well the best definition of monopsony is when it's a business which has significant buying or bargaining power in their particular markets and uh, this buying power means that they can exploit this against a supplier perhaps to negotiate a lower price, a better price for their inputs. If the cost of their inputs goes down, of course, for most businesses, that's a variable cost of production. A fall in the cost of inputs means that they can make a, big, a bigger profit margin if they're selling at a certain price. Now, crucially, monopsony power is effectively buying power in the market. It's a marketing economy of scale, and we tend to associate monopsony power with any business that has a significant scale of production and is purchasing lots and lots of inputs, raw materials, components down the supply chain. Lots of examples of monopsony power. So, for example, the, the major electricity generators might negotiate a lower price for coal contracts or, or other forms of energy. The big food, food retailers from Sainsbury's to Walmart to Tesco uh, and the deep discounters, old and little, they've got monopsony power when they're buying supplies, for example, direct from milk producers or from wine growers or from alba farmers of some some type and description oftentimes a particular farmer might be the sole supplier to a major supermarket and it's a question of the balance of power in the market british sugar for example buys almost the entire almost 100 percent of the entire sugar beet crop produced in the uk the government when it's spending money on defence projects and what have you, is a major buyer. And we've already mentioned the NHS, which is a dominant buyer of prescription drugs from the pharmaceutical companies. Although, of course, in recent times there's been, been news about the NHS effectively being, being taken for a ride by being overcharged for, for certain drugs by, uh, by some big pharma PLCs. What are the benefits of monopsony for a firm? Why might a firm want to establish and then maintain a monopsony power? Well, first of all, the obvious point that allows you to, to get some good analysis marks is that a monopsony power allows a bigger firm to achieve economies of scale. You can move down your long run average cost curve. And in the, in the long run, of course, if you've got lower unit costs, that should feed through to better supernormal profits and increased returns for shareholders, either in the form of dividends or a higher share price. Of course, the extra profit from monopsony could be reinvested to fund research and development, uh, or capital investment to grow the capacity of the business. So in theory, that buying power in the marketplace should bring down costs and increase profits for, for firms, for businesses. And there might also be some benefits for consumers. One argument is, for example, that the major supermarkets can negotiate a better price from the food processing companies, and then they may pass on some or a little bit of that to the consumer in the form of a, of a lower price. The NHS might be able to use its bargaining power, its buying power, to bring down the price of drugs used in, an, in core routine treatments. And of course, if you can make some cost savings, if you have a given NHS budget, that would allow more people to be treated for a given X billion pound drugs budget. So there are some potential benefits from consumers. Uh, but equally, there could be some downsides when, you, when you're evaluating these points, that businesses with significant monopsony power might squeeze, squeeze the life out of suppliers and therefore there's a loss of profit in the supply chain. The, the big issue recently, which a lot of exam boards have picked up on, is the essential battle between the milk producers and the supermarkets, and also the milk um, uh, processing businesses. 
about the price they're getting per litre of milk. A lot of milk farmers were complaining that the unit price they were getting from the milk processing businesses in particular was less than the average cost of producing it, causing them to make a loss. Quite a few milk farmers have left the market. Uh, and there's been a whole debate about how best to protect the interests of growers, of farmers, of businesses further down the supply chain when they are dependent on uh, a major buyer for their for their final output. And if people leave the market, if businesses leave the market because they get squeezed, then consumers actually face uh, less choice and perhaps higher prices in the long run. There are, of course, ways around this. So oftentimes we see that suppliers can get together to form a cooperative, perhaps. Uh, think about the international dimension to this, the fair trade movement, for example. Lots of smaller independent growers getting together to form a cooperative to try and get a better price for their products. If you think about the monopsony power of the major music publishing businesses at the moment, we're seeing an emerging trend in that sector for independent labels to try to grow and prosper and avoid contracts with the big publishers. For example, by using online digital marketing and savvy use of social media to promote artists and uh, new types of music. So there are ways around it, and oftentimes, of course, you've got a monopsony with buying power up against a monopoly with selling power, and then it's a battle royal to see who comes out on top. So here we go. We've just spent a few minutes looking at uh, this question of what monopsony power is, how do firms achieve it. Essentially, it's when large-scale firms have significant buying power, which allows them to go down the supply chain and get a better price for their products. It's really, it's really the result of scale in the market and having that credit card, the buying power, which gives you the whip hand in negotiations. Okay, thank you.